What is the Windows Registry? Well, the Windows Registry is basically made up of two different files, the user.dat and system.dat files, that tell the operating system how to set itself up. So it tells you how the background color is set up, how the web browser is configured, what applications are installed, and how they're configured, along with every other piece of how Windows is configured. If you compare that to, say, a Linux computer, Linux computers are basically set up with a whole bunch of text files. The text text files say what color the background should be and how the application should be set up, that kind of thing. But in Windows, it's set up with two registry files. And you can see here, this registry editor is what you do to go in and make changes to the registry. Now, you can get to the registry editor simply by going to the search box and typing reg edit. Now, you can see I'm in a Windows 11 computer and you just click to run as administrator, of course. And you can see this Windows 11 computer, it looks exactly the same as it does in previous versions when it comes to how to edit the registry. And it also looks the same on all servers as well. So let's take a look at the registry hive keys. These five hive keys are made up of the H key classes root, current user, etc. But there's what's called two physical keys, the local machine and the users, and the rest are what's called virtual keys. These virtual keys are all dependent on the two physical hive keys. So if the physical hive keys were to get damaged or deleted, then none of these other keys would actually matter. Now, if I expand any one of these hive keys, then you can see what's underneath it. You can see underneath hive keys are just keys. We just call these keys. And on the opposite side over here, on the right-hand side, you can see what's called values. Now, sometimes you're just going to see the default value, meaning that there's nothing that has been set. So let's take a look at, say, the Google key, and that shows no value set. Let's go to Intel. We can see a sub key here, and I can expand that. You can see that as you go through these different keys, you're going to see different amounts of values. So there's lots of different types of values that you see here. If you go to the type, you can see there's reg SZ, reg binary, all different types that you can go ahead and double click on and make changes to. Now, I'm not going to get into making changes to the binary values of things because you're not going to make any changes to those unless you you have an application or a document that says, if you're having this problem, go in and change the value of this key. But I am going to show you how to create keys, create values, back up those keys, and restore them as well. I'm going to collapse that particular key and collapse that hive key, just so you have experience with a couple other types of things here. Here is the H key users hive key. So you can see all these different keys underneath this H key users hive key. And each one of these represents a different profile. I'm going to go to where it says printers, for example, and I'll choose the convert users key. And you can see this is print to PDF. So what this does is it redirects any print jobs to a PDF file rather than getting printed out. So if I double click on this, you can see it has a value of one. Now you can see a hexadecimal and a decimal. So basically hexadecimal and decimal are just different ways of representing numbers. So a decimal number, as you all know, is zero through nine, and then you start over with 10 through 19, then 20, et cetera. Hexadecimal works a little bit different it goes zero through nine. So that's why the number one is the same in hexadecimal and decimal. And then when it gets to 10, it has no way of representing 10 as a single number. So what it does is it represents it as a letter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the number 10 and you're going to see that the hexadecimal uh, value is going to be the letter A. There we go. The letter A means 10. So for instance, if I go to 11, we can see it's going to be B, and there's B. And it goes up to F. It doesn't go any further than F, and that's because hexadecimal is has a maximum of 16 characters, and we start at zero, so zero through 15 is going to be hexadecimal. 
So let's take a look at how we can create some values. So if I right click and choose new, we're given a list of several different types of values. Now there's all these different types of values you see here. I'm not going to get into things like multi string and expandable string, those kinds of things. You're really going to only edit if you have an application that says you need to edit if you're having a certain problem or some knowledge base article, things like that. However, I am going to show you the two most popular types of keys to edit here or make changes to or add. The first one is D word. D word, as you can see, is 32 bit and Q word is 64 bit. So if I click on the D word 32 bit, I'm just going to type the word test and then click away and it creates the test value. And you can see it's a reg D word, which is 32 bit. Why are we still using 32 bit in a 64 bit operating system? That's because programmers still set up values to use the 32 bit values. So there's really no way around it if the programmer sets it up that way to work with the Windows registry. Now, if I right click on that and choose modify or just double click it, you can see I can go in and make changes to the hexadecimal or the decimal value. Typically, the value of zero is off and the value of one is on, but that's not always true of all different applications. Now, if I right click again and choose new and choose a Q word, 64 bit, I'll just call this one test two. And now you can see the difference in the type here. You can see register D word for 32 bit and register Q word for 64 bit. So instead of right clicking, I'll just double click and I get the same type of thing. And here I can go in and make, make a change once again to hexadecimal or decimal values. Now I'd like to show you how to back up either a key, a hive key, or the entire registry. All I need to do is to say right click anywhere I'd like to back up and it will back up any key and any sub keys beneath it along with their values. So I'll right click on printers, for instance. Now we don't see the option for backup. We do see the option for export. So I'm going to go ahead and choose export and I'm going to give this a name backup printer config. Now I'm going to export that here and I'll just drag it over. Now I'm going to delete my test key and I'm going to delete the values that I had created earlier. Now, all I have to do with this exported file is just double click on it and watch. It just brings it all back in. There we go. And there are my values and there's my deleted test key as well. So if you'd like to back up the entire registry, all you have to do is do this at the root level. So I can go right click and I can choose export. Now it's going to export a very large file. And the older your operating system is, the larger the file will be. And that's because every change you make adds data to the registry files. And that's one of the reasons why the older the computer gets, the longer it takes to boot up, which is why some people say, oh, you have to reinstall Windows after maybe a year or two. However, with SSD drives, I don't see that that being as required as it once was. I have additional videos in this channel about how to backup and restore the registry. It actually shows you how to do it. Also, how to load the registry with before Windows even loads so you can make changes to it in case your registry got corrupted, say, by malware or some other reason. So check out the playlist in Windows 10 and 11, and you can see all the different registry changes that you can make. So this is basically a tutorial on what the registry is, how to add and edit values and keys, and also how to backup by exporting and restore.